The Minnesota Timberwolves have not been good in forever, but it's looked a little better in the past few years. And today, I'll be talking about how I think the Minnesota Timberwolves can angle their future towards a championship. But today, I am joined with Bench Squads, a.k.a. Cade. Cade, say what's up to the boys. Good. How y'all doing? This week, we are taking a look at the 13th seeds, the Minnesota Timberwolves and the Cleveland Cavaliers. And if you guys don't know, every week, I take two teams from starting from the worst in the NBA to the best. And we talk about how I think they can angle themselves towards a championship. But for now on... I'm joined with Cade. So Cade will be here twice a week till forever. So that's exciting. But today we're going to focus on the Minnesota Timberwolves. So Cade, what do you think the Minnesota Timberwolves have to look forward to? The number one pick, Anthony Edwards, a huge cornerstone piece. I mean, you have to build around him. We've seen a 40-plus point performance from him on the same night as Cat. Add D'Lo to the mix next year. Hopefully he can stay healthy. I mean, their salary is kind of tight. But you add some shooters, you add some vets. Things are looking good going forward. They could sneak into a playoff like, spot in general. And who knows what could happen with that. You just keep building from there. If the core doesn't work, worst case scenario, you break it up. Okay. But the question is, the question is, do they build around Cat or do they focus building around Anthony Edwards? Because I think that could be a little different if they're focusing on one guy over another. But if you're going to go around Anthony Edwards, you have to blow it up. And you have to – I mean, you have to reset the cap because they have so much tied up right now. They have almost no wiggle room. They do have a lot tied up. But the only thing is with Ant and Cat. So, so far we've seen Ant one year. You know, we know that Anthony Edwards seems to be a scorer, not necessarily too efficient. But when they're a rookie, I'm not too worried about the efficiency. I am always, always say that. When they're a rookie, I accept a low field goal percentage because it shows confidence, you know. But Cat, something we know about Cat, a great offensive player. And honestly, one of the best offensive centers in the league. Top three offensive centers, I would say. Unfortunately, lacks defense. But I think that right now... That cat is the guy because we don't know if Ant's going to be established. And let's not forget, they have D'Angelo Russell uh, coming off the bench. That was an interesting choice, but they have him coming off the bench. And I just think that he is the man to trade if they want to build anymore. The thing about D'Angelo Russell and his situation is that he can be good and he can be the guy next to Carl Anthony Towns. But you have to give him that starting point guard role. Ricky Rubio for $17 million a year over two years. You just, you can't pay that to a guy who you're going to start and not let him finish the games, and he's going to give you 8 points, 11 assists. That leadership is good, and that core vision is good. But when you have someone at the caliber of D'Lo who's going to give you 25 points, 6 assists, like, you roll with that. You live with that. A bad defensive play here and there, do it. Cat can create. D'Lo can create. If you want to get rid of Anthony Edwards, his best value is going to be now before anyone finds out what he really is. Right now, he's a young, raw prospect who can get buckets. So you flip him now if you're going to go in that direction and you try and unload some cap that you have and other players that just don't deserve it, and you just start building around that with shooters and vets. Yeah, that's a good point. And, but, like, I'm trying to think who is the player to, 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 to like, give up on. Ant or D'Lo? I mean, uh, yeah, Ant or D'Lo. So I think it's D'Lo still because Ant seems to have, you know, I don't know, he has something I just like. Like, he has, like, a... A grit to him, something that he like go. He's a go getter. He wants it. Something that D'Lo is more relaxed. You know, D'Lo obviously got. It. He's a very talented guy. But let's talk about this trade that they're speaking of. They want to get Ben Simmons. I mean, everyone's talking about Timberwolves getting Ben Simmons, and some people say that they're not giving up Cat Ant or D'Lo for Ben Simmons. Like you're crazy as hell. They got to give up at least one of them to get Ben. And I think this for the Sixers too. They're gonna want D'Lo, and it's not like the. The Timberwolves literally have no picks this draft to trade. They have zero picks to, to trade. So, like, it has to be one of these three. There's no other options, in my opinion. I don't know about you. Do you think there's any other options besides D'Lo or Ant? I think you got to pick D'Lo for not only salary cap reasons, but fit reasons. I mean, you don't want D'Lo playing alongside Ben Simmons because D'Lo becomes a spot-up shooter, essentially, and a secondary playmaker. And Cat, I mean, him and Ben Simmons, I mean, having that room from Cat, letting Ben Simmons work, I mean, you thought that's what Joel gave, but Joel needs to be back to the basket, backing people down. How can create facing the ball? So I think you give up on uh, D'Lo because might as well. I mean, what, you, what you're getting in return is going to fit the team better. For sure. I think, yeah, I agree. D'Lo has to be the guy. And Ben Simmons, the thing was with Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid, it's like they always talked about it like, they weren't friends outside of basketball. And people might say, oh, like, it's not, it's not really a big deal. Well, I think it's kind of a big deal. Because chemistry, for me personally, like growing up, 
my best friends are always the players I played best with, and I know I'm not an NBA player, but still, you know what I mean. Like, Cat and Ben Simmons are boys, and I think that will help advance their games when they're playing together. And then you have Cat, an offensive player who can score from anywhere on offense. It's a big thing, because Joel Embiid didn't have the three-pointer that Cat does. Ben Simmons coming to the team adds a defensive aspect to them. Because right now, with Cat, no defense. Ant, no defense yet. I mean, not great defense. D'Lo, no defense. Their big three guys are offensive players. And one's a rookie. So, like, you know, with Ben Simmons, it gives them a different dynamic. You know, a big-ass dude, 6'10", ball handler. Because, you know, Ant is not a point guard. He's not a point guard. You know, and even D'Lo was not really a point guard, you know, kind of. But he's a shooting, he shoots, you know, he, he's known for his scoring abilities and his creating abilities more than his passing abilities. Well, Ben Simmons is known for his passing, and I know Ben Simmons has a lot of, to work on in his game, but I think Ben Simmons has so much potential still. I don't know about you, I'm still on that bandwagon. I am not giving up on Ben. I don't know about you, but I am definitely not. So I think Ben to the Timberwolves would be their move this offseason just because they have no picks. They need to shake it up really, really, really bad. Like you said, they have money tied up in players who aren't even on the team anymore. Like, it's crazy. They need to do something. They need to change something. I think Ben Simmons is the wave. I'll definitely agree. I mean, Ben Simmons is the wave. I am also high on him just like you. I've never given up. But something that could be, like, a low-key determining factor for playoff contention in the coming years is, like, I'll give homage to your heat. You don't have salary. That veteran presence, that championship presence, that grit, that determination, that want to win, who do they have? I mean, they don't really have that guy that he's been in that situation. He knows what it takes to win. None of these guys have really won. There's no real winners on our squad. I mean, they, they need to get that veteran presence. And that's something that you see on almost every championship team. From the Sixers, like think about it. If they give up D'Lo to get, and they're going to have to give up some other stuff, some future picks, Problem is see their roster. They're gonna have to give up D'Lo, maybe Rubio as well. I can imagine that. And then maybe they get Ben Simmons and George Hill, something like that. And then with some picks in the here and there. So I think George Hill could be a presence, not really a winner. But you're right. They really need someone who can who can bring in like that veteran presence. And I really don't know who can they who can they bring in. I don't know anyone off the top of my head. With the young squad, say they only get Ben and they get nothing else. That's a good offseason. That'll put them back in the playoffs. Let like play playing for sure, maybe playoff. But they won't be over the edge until you see them get a few more high-level 3 and D players and veterans. You have oh. to add that if you want to get over the hill. That's so true. They really do. They need, like, you know who would have been perfect for that team as well? Covington, a player they had a couple years back. But he would fit this team perfectly, especially if they got Ben Simmons. Then a Covington-type player would fit perfectly. So I think, overall, Minnesota got to shake it up. Got to shake the cage. Got to change some things. Got to make some moves. Because if they sit there with their hands in their pocket and sit on this team, I don't think it's going to work. Like you said, they do have a good foundation in young players. And they have a, a few directions. They have to make some big decisions that could be franchise-altering. And you just got to bite the bullet and do it. And one thing I think they need is pretty obvious to is shake up that front office a little bit. Because clearly, I mean, a franchise that's been bad this long doesn't have anything you know, crazy in that front office, especially their coaching has not been great. Development staff, eh, you know, they developed Catwell, but I don't know if that's development team or if that's Collins and Towns being amazing, you know. One last thing, the Timberwolves cannot mess up. And like I said, they have a franchise altering decision to make. You cannot waste Collins and Towns prime. He is just 25 years old and his prime, assuming he gets it at 26, 27, is just a couple years away. How long he'll be in that, we don't know. We've seen some gruesome injuries, talking back some timelines, we've seen some things happen. You just never know. And with the, with the unknown in the future, you just have to assume you need to win soon, especially with someone whose prime is so close. Same for D'Lo. I mean, he's 25 also. You have some time with Anthony Edwards if he is your guy. But if it's around, if you're building a round cat and having Anthony Edwards be that score, you need to act soon in so you don't waste any of his prime. Yeah, because cat, a cat is a once-in-a-lifetime player, honestly. And he's someone that you will not see – a long time, and it's not like Minnesota is a destination. No free agent's gonna go there that good, so they need to draft these kind of players. So, Cat, you're definitely something they have to hold on to. But that is the Minnesota Timberwolves. Friday, me and Kate are taking over the Cleveland Cavaliers. What we think they should do, but guys, make sure you leave a like, comment, subscribe, click those links in the description, show Cade some love for coming to the channel. That's it for us, Cade. Peace.